So guys, today we got a very nice trick in Unity that's super useful and as you have guessed by now, it's ground cracks. And with this technique, you can basically open up holes in pretty much any 3D object without touching the existing mesh, which is awesome. It has some limitations, but nonetheless, it's super cool. I used this technique and made several ground cracks and fissures with different shapes and feelings and colors and I made them all available on my Patreon page, links in the description. And quick shout out to today's sponsor which is RPG Builder, which is all about building an RPG game without coding, that it is highly customizable and it comes with so many features already implemented. Plus the developer is super active on this card and it can give you a hand or you can watch the continuously updated YouTube channel where he keeps on posting new features that are always coming out. And it's currently on sale or it will be soon, there's a link in the description. So with that being said, now let's see how we can crack the ground. So quick overview, this effect is going to be divided into four main parts. The first one is an image created in Photoshop, you can use GIMP or Crit as well. The second step, we are going to use Blender to create the mesh, the 3D object. The third step is in Unity and we are going to create a shader that disables the right combined with a custom configuration of the stencil buffer. And lastly we will create a glow shader to add this cool aesthetic to the crack on the ground. So I'm going to use Photoshop and I'm going to create a file with 2048 by 2048 and with the bucket tool I'm going to paint the background to black. Then we can create a layer. And it's a very simple texture where we only need the pen tool this tool right here, P for shortcut. And this is the step where we start designing our crack or our fissure that we want on the ground. And it's a very simple tool to use, you only need to point and click until you create a similar shape to this one or to one you have in mind. Once you have closed the shape, you can also move points while holding control if you are in Photoshop. But what really matters is that with right click, you select fill path. And in the content, we can use color and choose black. And that's it, now you simply need to add the black background and export this image as a PNG. Now let's open up Google and search for PNG to SVG. And I'm going to leave a link in the description, but the one I like to use is Convertio. In this site you can upload the file, in this case our crack. Make sure it's black, otherwise it won't work. And then you can click on Convert. Once you download it to a folder, you can open up Blender. I'm gonna press A to select everything and delete and then in file we can move to import and select scalable vector graphics and then you can navigate towards the file you just converted and import it. As you can see it's super small, we are going to increase it in a moment but first with tab let's enter in edit mode, select everything with A and then with shift S we want to choose cursor to select it. Now with Ctrl Shift Alt C, let's select Origin to 3D Cursor. We are basically resetting the pivot of this object. And now if you open this right side panel, in Transform you can insert 0, 0 in location. And also 5, 5 in the dimension, X and Y only. And with that being done, if you enter in Edit Mode, you will notice this is a Bezier curve. So in Object Mode, we want to press Alt C and choose Mesh from Curve. And now with tab, if we enter in edit mode, you will notice that we have a lot of geometry. That's another problem. So select everything, press spacebar and search for decimate. It will simplify a lot the geometry and remove all of these faces. You can open this decimate geometry panel. And in my case, if I set the ratio to around 0.05, that's the limit before it starts removing too much geometry. Now still in edit mode, if you want, you can press control tab and select faces. And for example, when you have two triangles like these ones, you can convert them to a face and you will basically make this mesh lighter, right? Basically you can select two triangles and then press F to create a face and that's it. With that being done, let's name this object. In this case, this one is going to be ground crack top. Now still in edit mode and with everything selected, we want to press E one time and then go downwards in the opposite direction. In my case, more or less, minus 1.5 meters. Now with Ctrl Tab, I'm going to select faces and press 1 so we can see these sideways and press Z to see through and select only the top faces. Because now with P, we can separate the selection. 
And if we go to object mode with tab, as you can see, we have this top crack separated. In fact, let's correct the name, remove the 001 and name the other object to ground crack walls. They are going to be the walls of the crack, the part that goes underground. Okay, so that's it for Blender for now. We have two meshes and we can save this blend file directly to your Unity project. And if we move over to our Unity project, in my case, I'm using 2020.1.13 with the universal render pipeline. And in here, make sure that you go to package manager and you have shader graph as well as visual effect graph install it. Once that is done, if you have saved your blend file directly to Unity, now you can simply drag and drop it to your scene. And here we go, we have our crack in Unity. And by the way, if you select the top mesh and you don't see it, you only see it if you go below it. That means that you need to go to Blender again, select this top mesh, enter in edit mode, select everything with A and press spacebar to choose flip normals. Once you have done it, you can save this blend file. And since it is inside Unity, it will automatically update and you should see the change. Now, this step is probably one of the hardest ones and most complicated. And as it is now, we cannot do this step in Shader Graph because we can't control the stencil buffer. So we have to do these following steps. As you can see, I have this ground, which is simply a cube, and it's set to a see-through layer. We can press Add Layer and make sure you add a layer mask and a see-through layer. We need these two layers. I recommend you copy these names and then that you set your ground to the see-through layer. Once you have done it, you can select the crack top and change its layer to layer mask. And it seems like it has done something because my render is already set up. It seems like it has done something because if we go to edit and press project settings, if you go to graphics and click in this scriptable render pipeline, Unity will highlight it in your project. You can select it and then up here, click on the forward render so you can locate it. And now we need to make changes to the forward render. As you can see, I already have the mask and the see-through render object set up and I'm going to remove them and show you how to set them up. So first, make sure that up here everything is the same, especially in the pack layer mask, you want to unselect the two layers you have created, the layer mask and the see-through layer. This tells Unity to not render these two layers at all. Down here, you want to turn on stencil. The value is going to be zero and the compare function is always. Now we are going to add back those two layers, but render them before rendering opaque objects. Let's add a render feature. The first feature we want to add is called mask. And it's an event that it's going to happen before rendering opaques. If you want to learn more about renderers, I highly recommend you to check out the links I left in the description, by the way. And then this render object, it's going to be only for the layer mask. And as you can see, it has automatically changed the cracked top. It's now visible. And we still need to create an override for the stencil buffer. For now, let's turn on stencil override, set the value to 1 and the pass is going to replace. What's important is that you see the render object you created, in this case the mask, below the forward render. And make sure you press Ctrl S to save. Now let's add another render feature. This time it's going to be called See True. And it's an event that it's also going to happen before rendering opaques, but only to the objects that are in the See True layer. And now it will render once again the ground. We also need to override the stencil buffer with a value of 1. And in this case, it's not always going to compare. It's only going to compare if it's not equal. And now make sure you press Ctrl S to save again. And if you unselect forward render and then select it again, you may have this bug where the configurations disappear. And that's annoying. The way we can solve it is by directly selecting the mask here. And then once again, override the stencil buffer with a value of one, always compare and the pass is replace. And for the see-through render object, we are also going to override stencil with a value of 1. It's not always going to compare, it's only going to compare if it's not equal. And here we go. So with right click, we are going to create a shader, but this time not a graph. We are going to create a standard surface shader. And we can rename it in this case to disable Z-Write. 
double click it to open and once you have open you can select everything with Control a and delete it and then we are going to type shader open brackets this is the name you can put something like custom slash disable z right in the sub shader we want to declare a tag that it's going to set the render type of this shader to be opaque and in the pass we are going to simply say z right off we are disabling the z right so it can render what's behind as you can see the crack it's not rendering what's behind because it's opaque we cannot see it through and because z right is on but in this new shader we have disabled it so we should see true. So let's create a material out of this shader and simply assign it to the crack top. And once you do it, since it's disabling the Z right, it looks transparent. But in reality, it's still there and it's still casting shadows, by the way. But here we go, we have a crack on the ground, we have a hole on the ground, and it's certainly looking awesome. Now we are going to create a shader graph to add some glow to this crack and make it look much better. So with right click, you can go to shader and this time create a PBR graph. And let's already create a material out of this shader with right click and assign it to the crack walls. And it's PBR because if you want to add textures and if you want this to be influenced by light and control the metallic and smoothness properties, you still can do it with this basic setup. In our case, I'm only going to create the glow. Anyway, for the glow, we want a color, glow color in HDR, and I'm going to choose an orange, increase the alpha and the intensity as well. We can drag and drop it to around here, and we are going to create a gradient. So we are going to use UV, and if we split this, we get access to a gradient. In this case, we want the green channel, the G channel. And if you connect it to a power node, as you can see, it goes from black to white. And now we can multiply this power node with the color and we can connect it to the emission input. If we save it, it should happen something, right? If you have used Blender to create your mesh, you need to go back to Blender now because it doesn't have any UVs. So what we are going to do is we are going to drag a window from this left bottom corner, just like this. And up here, we are going to select UV editor. Now, if you enter in edit mode of the walls and press A to select everything, as you can see, we don't have UV maps. To create them, we want to select only the bottom faces because we want to separate them once again with P because we don't want this to be affected by the gradient. And we are going to rename this to ground crack bottom. Select the ground crack button, enter in edit mode. You need to be in top view, you can press 7 in your numpad. Select everything with A and press U so we can create the UVs and we can create it from project from view and it will create the UV maps for the crack button. Now for the walls we also want to enter in edit mode. Select everything with A, press U and select follow active quad. And now we can scale this down until it fits in this UV square. Once you have adjusted the UVs to be like this, as you can see, if we select this top vertice, they represent the bottom of the mesh, which means we need to rotate 180 degrees the UVs. Select everything with A and rotate with R 180. And now they correspond to each other. The bottom of the UVs is the bottom of the mesh. And that's it for the mesh. You can press Ctrl S to save it and it will automatically update in Unity and you will probably see this intense glow. Anyway, as you will notice, this glow should be the opposite. We want the glow to be brighter at the bottom. So in our shader, after the split, we want to invert this with a one minus node and then connect it to the power node. Rearrange this and save it. And as you can see, tada! we get a nice looking glow that goes from the bottom to the top. And that's when this becomes visually very interesting. Let's just create another vector one so we can control the power. We are going to call it glow power with a default value of two and connect it right here to the power node. But we still need glow for the crack bottom. And that's very simple. We only need to duplicate the glow material. I'm going to rename it to glow 
bottom or bot and the other one to glow walls so we can distinguish them and we can assign the glow button to to the ground crack button and as you can see we have a little gradient down here and the easiest way to solve it is to set the glow power to zero and you can increase the intensity or even change the color but yeah this is the main idea if you want to know how to add particles i recommend you watch other tutorials about vfx graph there's other tutorials on my channel that you can check out Anyway, the possibilities are a lot of course, but at least you got the basics done and you can explore from here. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please smash the subscribe button and leave a like. If you want to support me, you can also get these assets and much more effects for your games and projects. To all my patrons, these videos would not be possible without you. And a special shout out goes to the top tier patrons, which are Adrian Breton, Alejandro Hernandez, CKVFX, Darius Prenskus, David Crew, Goblin Plague, Guy Lee, Imarias PC, Hostile Mars Game, John Nix, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Oitsk, and Vincent Maverick. Really appreciate the support, guys. It means a lot. And thanks everyone for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.